The intent of this video is to review the U.S. retaliatory plans if Germany used poison gas on U.S. or British Allied troops during World War II. I don't believe this story has been widely shared to the public. The U.S. was concerned that Germany would use poison gas to stop the D-Day invasion, as discussed in this 1951 The U.S. Army Air Forces in World War II Volume 3 report. The British were concerned that Germany would crash their V-1 flying bombs and or their V-2 rockets containing poison gas into English cities. The U.S. reprisal plan is outlined in this declassified March 1944, 123-page Chief of the Air Staff Intelligence document titled Selected Aerial Objectives for the Retaliatory Gas Attack on Germany. The report was issued three months prior to the D-Day invasion. All of the documents shown in this presentation are declassified. The Dictionary.com website defines retaliation as done in order to take revenge and returning evil for evil. The retaliation plan would only be implemented if Hitler or the OKW authorized poison gas usage against Allied troops or against Great Britain. The objectives of the retaliation chemical warfare plan are as outlined. Inflict widespread civilian casualties. Only attack cities in the German Reich. Poison gas attacks will be limited to a 15-day window of aerial bombing. The city selected will be within 650 miles from U.S. air bases located in Great Britain and Italy. Note that both B-17 and B-24 U.S. heavy bombers were operating out of both Great Britain and Italy, as shown in this map. The U.S. had stockpiled both mustard and phosgene poison gas agents. The U.S. would deploy either mustard or phosgene poison gases, depending on the atmospheric and environmental conditions best suited to maximize the gas's casualty effectiveness. Mustard gas is a persistent blister agent. A persistent gas or liquid will not dissipate for days. Mustard gas is colorless and odorless. Mustard gas will cause a chemical burn and temporary blindness when in contact. The mortality rate for mustard gas exposure was 2-3% to in World War I, but the exposed subject will likely need hospitalization. Phosgene gas, on the other hand, is considered a non-persistent chemical agent. A non-persistent chemical agent are gases that will dissipate and lose their ability to cause casualties within a couple of hours. The victim's lungs will react with the gas, causing suffocation. Phosgene gas was used in World War I and accounted for about 85% of the war's poison gas deaths. Phosgene gas is considered around 6 to 10 times more deadly than chlorine gas. These gases were mainly dispersed by artillery or gas canisters in World War I. In World War II, the U.S. planned on dispensing the chemical agents solely on the 4,000 B-17 and B-24 bombers available. By the D-Day landings, the U.S. Army Air Force had the capability to carpet bomb 64 square miles of Germany's urban core, as discussed on page 1 of the report. 30 German cities were selected for the gas attack. These 30 cities were within a 650-mile radii of U.S. bases in Great Britain and Italy. Table 2 of the report lists the 30 German cities identified for gassing. The first column is the city's rank based on its population. The second column is the German city name. The third column is the city's population. The fourth and fifth columns are the distances from the German city to London or Foggia. The sixth column is the target area size in square miles to be carpet bombed by poison gas. The seventh column is the German population expected to be exposed in the target area. The targets were selected to maximize civilian casualties and disrupt the Reich's war effort. The location of the 30 German cities identified for U.S. poison gas attack are located on this map. The U.S. 8th Army Air Force is operating by London is located here. The U.S. 15th Army Air Forces op operating out of Foggia, Italy is located here. The 30 target cities are identified in this column. The city of Berlin is highlighted on the map. Berlin will be attacked solely by the 8th Army Air Forces as it is outside the 650 mile range of the 15th Army Air Forces. The logistics and order of battle for the gas attacks are listed in this section of the report. All conventional strategic and tactical bombing missions will be stopped. Crews will be briefed on their new missions, loadouts, and targets. The city bombing poison gas attacks will start on G-Day. I suppose G is for gas. The operation will last 15 days. 
The operation will be considered a maximum effort. Only B-17s and B-24s will be available to participate in the bombing effort. To ensure maximum German casualties, the bomb load mix will consist of 75% gas and 25% either high explosive or incendiary bombs. 100 bombers are needed to gas each square mile of urban area. Each B-17 will carry 42 100-pound class mustard bombs in the plane's bomb bay. The B-17 bomb bay is shown in this image. 57 pounds of the mustard agent will be contained within the M-70 bomb, as shown in this image from the September 1945 U.S. Bomb and Fuses Manual. The M-70 bomb and bomb components are shown in this image. Upon impact, the fuse detonation train will explode the bomb. This will send case fragments and the mustard gas and liquid agent radially outward. I suspect the wind would carry the mustard gases through the urban target zones and beyond, like in these German smokescreen images. The Germans adopted smokescreens to mask the bombing target. Each B-17 will carry six 1,000-pound class phosgene bombs in the plane's bomb bay. The phosgene gas will be contained in the much larger AN-M79 class chemical bomb. The M79 chemical bomb will be filled with 404 pounds of the phosgene gas compound. The detonation train of the M79 is the same as a mustard gas bomb. The initial phosgene cloud will cover a circular area 100 yards in diameter from the bomb's detonation location. The 30 city targets were selected based on maximum urban casualties, disrupting transportation and public services, complicating the repair of the high explosive bomb damage, and making the targets vulnerable to future incendiary attacks. Gas target zones within the city should be based on the maximum population densities and contain facilities that contribute to the Reich's war effort. Best to attack with the deadly phosgene gas when there exists a temperature inversion. Best to attack with the mustard gas when the temperature is the highest. The U.S. plan does not take into account British RAF bombing. The report describes the impact and consequences of the poison gas bombing in part four of the document. 17.5 million German citizens would be exposed to the effects of the bombing. 5.6 million Germans would be affected directly since they would be located in the target zone. This does not imply 5.6 million deaths, but most citizens exposed would require hospitalization. The number of deaths and hospitalizations of this magnitude would be a catastrophic strain on the medical facilities. In my opinion, the bombing would likely grind the Axis war effort to a halt. A footnote on page 15 of the report indicates the U.S. had sufficient mustard gas bombs in adequate quantities for this bombing operation. The footnote also indicates storage facilities for the phosgene bombs had been authorized. The report lists and summarizes the bombing parameters for each of the 30 German cities in Appendix B. For example, the target zone for Berlin is shown in this image from page 30 of the report. The two target zones represent 15 square miles with a population of about 1.25 million citizens within the target zone. The zones of population densities, important war industries, and rail facilities are shaded in the map. Zone 1 has a population around 600,000 Berliners. Zone 2 houses the residential section of the city with a population of around 650,000 Berliners. The entire Berlin G-Day bombing mission could be accomplished by around 1,500 poison gas carrying B-17 bombers and around 375 B-17 bombers carrying either a high explosive or incendiary loadout. Berlin's strategic importance to Germany's war effort, city layout, vulnerability, weather, and the zone's rationale selection for attack are described in this image. So how close was Germany to using poison gas against U.S. or Britain? It was German policy not to use battlefield chemical weapons against the Allies unless they used them first, as discussed in this 1949 document, History of German Chemical Warfare in World War II. Germany's V weapons would not make efficient poison gas delivery systems as discussed in Chapter 7 of the report. The field of dispersion would be too wide, the carrying capability of the individual projectile was too small, and the rate of fire would be too low to saturate a large area. One V2 rocket could carry only around 80% the quantity of phosgene gas chemical agent as a single B-17 and with much less accuracy. 
In summary, the U.S. was ready to retaliate if Germany adopted poison gas against the U.S. or Great Britain. The poison gas carpet bombing campaign would directly target 30 German cities over a 15-day period to maximize civilian casualties and disrupt the German war economy. About 5.6 million Germans were expected to be gassed directly. Couple points to ponder. Do you consider the U.S. retaliation response to target 5.6 million Germans with poison gas justified or not justified? One of Harry Truman's post-war reasons for using the atomic bomb was that if the public knew he had a weapon that would have ended the war but not deploy it, he would have been crucified. Do you think the effects of the poison gas bombing would have ended Germany's ability to carry on fighting? If the G-Day operation would have ended the war, should the U.S. have striked Germany with poison gas? If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.